I am so thrilled to say there is new need to breathe music. Um, I, I have to share just a, a really quick testimony. My, my little brother, little brother is 50. Um, we were driving. I went to go see him in Chicago. My brother has never listened to Christian music ever. And we're driving, we're going someplace, we're going to eat lunch. And all of a sudden I'm listening to his, 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 his stereo. And I'm like, that's need to breathe. And he goes, yeah, they're one of ours. They're one of mine. <laughs> and I, I was so proud. I was so thrilled because your music has reached my cynical little brother. So thank you very much. Oh, of course, man. Thank you. That's we appreciate awesome. it. Yes. And now we got new music. Thankfully, it's here. Um, how do you feel? Is it like, you know, do you feel like you've collectively given birth now that Into the Mysteries here? Yeah, yeah, it's it's different. I mean, most of the time we take a long time to make a record. So by the time we release it, we not that we hate it, but we don't listen to it. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like it's done. I'm never yeah. going to five years later. I'll check this out. This one was so quick. I feel like it's we have like a real it still feels fresh to us. Which is kind of nice now that we're kind of working out how to play the songs live and all that's nice. And it's really kind of cool how it happened because you guys kind of just locked yourself away in a farmhouse, which is beautiful, for several months and just made it all happen. Three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. How did you do it in three weeks? An entire album. It's we, been a goal of ours for many, many years, but we have never been successful. <laughs> yeah. Song a day, basically. We what? start. I mean, it's. I mean, it's crazy, the story of, like, we basically would wake up together, have coffee. we go into, there's a little parlor room that had a piano in it in front of, and we would sit in there and kind of go through the lyrics and play through it acoustically and talk about ideas, get the arrangement, like, okay, break, you know? It's like we start making the record. Um, and then by dinner time, most of the time, maybe a little after, we would be pretty much done with the track that day. Wow. And then we just sit around the fire at night and hang. <laughs> so it was literally, like, that idyllic, to the point where in the weekends – we could have gone home like on a, you know, it's close enough to here for us to get yeah. whatever. Right. And, and nobody left. We just oh. hung out and had a good time. You so. wanted to be with one another. Yeah. 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 There was a pool in the back. So we'd all go out and just sit at the pool and talk and hang Lots out. Barbecues. And yeah. All that. Oh. It was awesome. Yeah, that is it. That is a perfect creative environment. Yeah. 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 It really was. When you shut everything out. Right. You were, um, I, I love the concept when you guys were talking about the fact that it, it, you, you, you literally would go to a bonfire when you were done at the end of the day. Yeah, and and the stories like we had, we had some guests in. We had John Foreman from Switchfoot right. come down, um, and so like that was we got to kind of like I mean we've hung a lot and been on tour before, but not had those kind of extended, yeah. like tell us the worst mistakes you made as a man. All those <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah, interviewed yeah. him. It's a tutorial. Um, it's a master class. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, so that was I don't know. It was awesome. And the message of your music, a lot of the songs that we're going to hear are about everything that we were facing during the last several months, which was unprecedented, things that we had never even imagined we would face. What do you feel like is the overall message or what do you want people to hear when they're listening to this new stuff? Yeah, it's it's uh, I ended up writing more by myself on this record than ever. So I think there it's a little bit more personal than some of our other records um, where it has to be sort of a collective voice. But I think we were all ended up going through the same things, yeah. maybe more. I mean, I don't think we've ever made music in a time where the world is all unified with that one feeling of like, whoa, what what comes oh, next? Oh, crazy. And, yeah. And so I, I felt like while well, I started sending them songs, I did not think it was going to be an album. I was just like, what do you think about this? I was just playing around in my studio. <laughs> and it turned in, you know, Joshua and Seth were both really positive about the songs. Like, maybe this should be a record. Um, so it, it feels we feel very thankful to have the experience. I don't think it could have happened without the pandemic without us not being on tour. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been on tour every fall for the last 20 years. You know? It's the first time we oh. were like, uh, I guess we can hang out and do some other kind of work. <laughs> Let's make some music. Uh, yeah. Why not? I, I, I found it astonishing. It was to the point where uh, I had a couple of songwriters say this, that this quarantine time was unbelievably good for them because you came up with over 100 songs. Yeah. Yeah, and it and honestly, what the freeing part of it was, I just wasn't writing for a record. It wasn't a means to an end at all, and I was working in my own studio, and so I was trying to learn how to do the demos because I was like, nobody's gonna hear these songs if I don't sure. figure out how to do it myself. Um, so that is a really sweet freeing part. You know, hopefully we can kind of like do that more in the future. <laughs> I feel like most of the time there's like a deadline for a record. Oh, sure. You've got a theme for what you're writing about. So um, what of that hundred plus songs? What was the worst one? 
Oh, there was plenty. Some days, <laughs> literally some days I would go in there and try to write a country song as an experiment. And those were definitely the worst ones. Um, <laughs> didn't work out, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah he'd, he'd send them to everybody and then he'd, he'd be like, what do you think of this? And then if, if you didn't get a response within, you know, six hours, you're yeah. like, that, that song was probably not that good. Okay. 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 Yeah, that was not making the album. Yeah, okay, yeah, that yeah, was not making the cut. I love how you described this, talking about the album, that creation happens in silence. And obviously you guys setting yourself aside and going to this farm and taking the time. But I look at it too, like in your own life, when you sit down and you're in, in a silent place that you can really hear from God, kind of explain how you heard from him in a different way because you were, your creation was happening in the silence in the time that we were set apart because of COVID. Yeah. I think, I mean, talking to a lot of people, I certainly felt this way a little bit like a house of mirrors. <laughs> I think when it was the first time we've been off the road for that long. And so I'm sort of grappling with things that I don't normally have time. Maybe I'm just too active or whatever it is sure. to, yeah. to like let that kind of seep in. So a lot of the stuff for me was like um, things I've been going through personally in the last couple of years with anxiety and these kind of like, I'm like working out parental things and all that. And I've got three little boys now. Um, and so it's like, how do I want a parent? And I had like a real chance to actually figure that out, not just be catching them all the time. So I think that was sweet. And, and I would look as bad as things were in the studio, there's a window um, and I would, a lot of the songs ended up being this really positive, bright, nostalgic songs. And I, it, which is crazy to think yeah. that's not the way I was really feeling, but, um, all through that, I would look out the window and be like, man, like this, is, the world is full of color. It's, there's so many beautiful things that like we thought, I don't know, that we had to be on the road, that we had to be doing this. And, um, so I think for me, that was probably the, the lesson, I guess I was sort of grappling with. And you, and you guys know with our music, it's like, we, we never try to teach. Like we're just no. not, we're not smart enough. At it. We don't, we don't, not, we don't have it figured <laughs> right. out. You know I know I mean? that very well. Yeah. I mean, not being just, smart. I'm all over that. Yeah. Way. So I feel like for us, it's really, I sometimes don't know what the record is about really until I've listened to it much later because oh, most sure. of the stuff is emotional. It's like, I'm mm -hmm. going through, you know, the end of the mystery that the title track is about, um, i grew up very conservative Christian, that sort of thing. But I was a pastor. So there was some limitations it felt like to me, whether it was intentional, I'm sure it wasn't from them, it felt like, well, we love you as long as you stay between these lines. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to tell our kids every day, like, we'll love you no matter what you do, you know? And, and that's harder than as, as they're getting older, it's especially hard because yeah. you, you have expectations <laughs> yeah. for them and those things. So I think that paralleled a lot with what the band was going through. We had my brother left the band a couple of years ago and I was like, okay, this is a new thing and we can't tour. So do we even have a job? Is this, you know, do we get wow. to continue? So I think we all felt that way um, is is really like, this is just music. I'm making music and I have no idea if anyone's going to hear it. Um, it's kind of oh beautiful. Yeah. It, wow. I didn't even think about that. Making music that no one might hear. I, there, I've been meaning to ask you this since you walked in. I have had literally half a dozen people, people from um, Natalie Grant, uh, Ryan Stevenson, these people, when you say, who are they, you know, give me a list of three people you really want to sing with. And you guys are always on that list. <laughs> that's awesome. And that, that's got to give you such a great, and then you're collaborating with Switchfoot. You're collaborating with Carrie Underwood. That has got to give you a feeling that you are accomplished. Yet. Well, how does that make you feel? Um, it's amazing. And I think we're at a place where we can kind of do that. It's hard to do that when, when there's like uncertainty in your own camp. Sure. <laughs> it makes it tough to collaborate with, to be honest. And so there's a, a sweetness that's going on right now where even like the Carrie thing and the John thing, like when I texted John the song, um, I was like, man, maybe we should write the, you should write the rest of this song. And like, let's do it. And it was 20 minutes later. He's like, here's the verse and here's the, whatever it's like, let's do it. I'll be there. You know, um, that it's a huge blessing. You know what I mean? I mean, we grew up listening to, to switch foot. We were kids. Um, so it's kind of a hero for us. And again, you get to learn. You get to learn a lot from a guy who's been around the corner a couple of times. Yeah, and they're and they they're a great example of the, they're just the sweetest people in the world. And I think most people who know them or run into them, certainly in the business side of things, yeah. their reputation is just so great. Um, we're definitely learning mostly about that. You know, like how do you do that in a sustainable way? I love how you're crossing those lines, though, singing with people that maybe aren't always on Christian radio. And a lot of people like Skipper had mentioned his brother listening and people that maybe don't know the Lord. How does that make you feel knowing that your music truly is you're reaching many people who have maybe never even thought about serving God before? Yeah, I think I mean, for me, that's the reason I got into a band. You know, I grew up with the pastor dad, went and played college football and all these guys were not 
they didn't believe the same as me. They weren't church. And it was like, so then you have to kind of lose some of the language to relate. Like, oh, you sure. know what I mean? It's yes. not this, it's not just a Christian culture thing we're talking to. And so that's where that whole like outsiders album that we made was about. It's like, we're, we're literally singing to the people on the fringes. And we always felt like that. You know, it's like we're, we play a festival. It's like yeah. half of these people are not going to like what we do. <laughs> yeah. And half of them. And we just really kind of, I don't know, stuck to that because that's kind of I think that's in some ways where we are. I, I I truly feel we need to do more of that. I think we need to be out on those fringes, and that's what I love about Need to Breathe music is that it it is out there. My well, my brother didn't even realize what he was listening to when he was <laughs> listening to it, but he he loved it. And then as he listened to it, we had a huge conversation about it, and and you know the blessing again that you gave me through that music, and you're doing that you know hundred thousand fold. Thank you, man. I appreciate Incredible. that. Incredible. What is that one message, though, that you want people to hear? That maybe they have loved Jesus for years and years, or maybe they're brand new and they're like, what is this band all about? Is it is it hope? Is it faith? I mean, what what do you want them to hear? We, we say, you know, we make music to inspire people, and that's like a pretty broad kind of yeah. thing. Like, sure. you hate, hate that you, people come to the show and not leave wanting to be a better husband or child or coworker or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, leave with all this energy. So I think that's a, a big part of it. But the other thing is just being honest and vulnerable in the things. I mean, we've always felt like the song, like track four is not believable unless one, two, and three tell the story of like how mm-hmm. you got there. So I feel like with our records, it's never been like, oh, we got to wrap it up on every song, like with a neat, neat sort of bow. You know? Yeah. It's like, maybe we're kind of messed up too. You know, and maybe that's okay. Like everybody's struggling with this and sort of grappling with it. So I think the most gratifying thing to me is when, it gives people, um, makes them feel like other people are going through what they're going through or yep. it's, you're giving them a song to live yep. to. Um, that's the ideal for us. You're not on the pedestal. We're all in this together. Regardless yeah, yeah. of if you put that label of I'm a Christian on yourself or not, that they can find hope and they can see that in you guys. I, I love yep. that. I, I think, think that's incredible. I think for this record, for sure, like I think we all walked into that house, not really, like we were all in different places, but then we were all kind of, at the end of the day, we're all around the campfire. We're like talking. We're like, oh, maybe we're all kind of in the same spot. And I think realizing that, like, we need each other. I think that's kind of like the message. And so for us, even like putting out a record that we hope everybody loves. But even for us, I feel like we grew a lot together and realized how much we need each other to, to kind of walk through whatever we're going through. Yeah. You know, I think so. For people to know that, you know, when they listen to the record, they're hearing a, a, a bunch of guys that are actually on the same page for maybe the first time in a very long time. Well, one of the quotes that you had was you realize that you're still hungry. Yeah. And especially for you guys, you know, 10 years, 20 years, you, whatever that thing is, you're just thank, 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 thankful to God that, you know, it's there and you can still feel it. And you're thrown into the situation that, man, that feels good. And you don't want that to stop. No. And I, I think, you know, some for me, like the kids thing is a great example. Like the boys are just so they're full of life. You know, they walk into every room. There's no, I have that feeling like maybe I'm not good enough to be in most rooms I'm in. Oh, yeah. You know? oh. yeah. Um, and so I think there's a lot of that language in there of kind mm-hmm. of like, I'm just jealous of what the way they attack life, you know? Um, and so I think we all kind of felt like that. Like let's, let's let ourselves be kids making this music. Like let's, mm-hmm. let's get in here and actually enjoy it and laugh a lot. And um, for me, it was just a really weird, like being in my studio by myself in the middle of the afternoon and just start, something cool would happen, you know, like this inspiration thing or just like this moment. And I would die laughing and my wife would be like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. I just, <laughs> I'm literally see, wow. enjoying what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting in a room by myself <laughs> laughing. What could possibly be wrong? Yeah. Everything is fine. Thank you. <laughs> I, and heading out, it, getting back out on the road. Um, what I think first week of September, mm-hmm. how is that going to feel? Like such a, a release. So, you know, um, getting to, getting to be with people again and enjoying music together with people and just the I mean we went to a concert last week and we were like losing our minds like yeah. kids <laughs> dancing just like feeling the music as loud as it is and and watch, getting to watch a show again and um just feeling that energy of the collective conscious mm-hmm. everybody there singing together um that's amazing we're really looking forward to I that. got to go to do a, a couple of small shows and you definitely feel that it is it is a, a more of an intimate group experience because we're all just relieved to be there together. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that's just going to have such a great effect because your audience, you're on, you have some of the best audiences. They are so much fun to be around, but man, that's going to be amplified and that just feeds you. Well, we actually, we went to the show last week and we, yeah, we were all just like, yeah, li- like li- li- just losing our minds, yeah. having the best time. And then afterwards we were like, 
we should go jam. So we literally went uh, back to a rehearsal space. Did you After really? Day, yeah. <laughs> For like, in the morning. Just middle like of the night. We're inspired. like, let's go play music what? again. Let's oh. go. Which 20 years oh. in, that's kind of awesome to be able to do that. After and, 20 years to have that kind of passion. Yeah. I love that. Through all this yeah. new stuff that's changing, obviously new music, and then you guys are going to be touring soon. What do you think in this moment right now are you learning most about God and about yourself? Um, I think for me, there's there's several songs on the right. There's a song called West Texas Wind. It's like when that kind of adversity comes, obviously, you know, like I think the, a lot of doubts and those kind of things come up. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like I feel like all the songs, not all of them, but most of them on the record are kind of like, we need God. Like we're, yep. <laughs> that's what, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like and that's the creator of all these beautiful things. And, and uh, so for me, I think um, I, I'm, is as like pessimistic as I can be, you know what I mean? <laughs> Personally, um, it was, it's just a really sweet moment to be like, at the end of the day, this is what matters. My identity is not in this music. It's not in whether or not this record sells or doesn't. And, you know, um, or even if the band is still around, which was a question that we were asking ourselves, you know, it's like, would I do this because I feel like God gave us this gift or opportunity to do it. And it makes you even more thankful when those opportunities happen. I mean, like the Carrie Underwood thing is a good example of like, yeah. I just threw that out to our manager as a text, like maybe she'll do this, <laughs> like not thinking. And so when that comes back and it's like, we'll do it. It's such a gift. Um, so that's, that's me. Man. Yeah. yeah that girl's gospel roots. They run deep. No doubt. Um, yeah. Way deep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, one takeaway from me was just, you know, during the season where like we can't, you know, you couldn't go to church, couldn't go be around other people. Yeah. I think the value of, of having like that pure and innocent moment where there's, there's no one watching you. And you're not um, uh, self-conscious about how you might look, you know, in a in a community setting. Um, just being being alone with God, being alone with your faith, and like uh, what can what can happen in that moment? I think uh, there's so much more available to us, but like we get in the way because of how aware we are of ourselves. And really, when you're just engaging your spirit, you know. Um, the rest of it's a hindrance, you know, yeah. thinking about what do I look like? What do I sound like? All that. So that's kind of a beautiful thing that I discovered in that uh, season where there was no choice. Right. You're going to mm -hmm. have spirit time is going to be at home by there yourself. You go. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're giving you. I, and I have to imagine that with, with all of this, and especially after you get back on the road, you guys are going to be jonesing to get back in and do it all over again. Yeah. I mean, this is the most, you know, you mentioned hungry earlier, but this is the most, it's not even really that probably is not the best description of it. It's just like we're excited to do the next thing and things just keep kind of falling out. And as long as we're enjoying it, right? you know yes. what I mean? Um, it seems like the creative level has gone way up. It just takes also the sting out of it. Yeah. The idea that maybe this was being taken away has taken all that sort of like, oh, we have to do it. This is who we oh, are. Oh, sure. You know, um, so it's made it more playful in a way. And, and, and I've always said this like where I'm said, I don't know. What we're writing about until I've listened to it later. I do feel like the songs are a gift. I've always felt that way. Um, and that's the best way to describe it. It's just like later on, I'm like, whoa, I can't believe God used this in that way. Cause some of these songs were written out of the most maybe darkest times personally for yeah, me. Yeah. And then I, and then people are listening to them like an anthem for them, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, yes. um, that obviously is not how we intended it. So it's perfect. I don't know. It feels like we're part of a process that. It's obviously bigger than us. Well, you get what eight albums in. Do you have the ability to go back and just listen? Even especially with uh, with into the mystery, are you able to just enjoy it for what it is? I asked that uh, there was a, a John Lennon quote that he said when he listened to his music, he'd remember like, "Oh yeah, I had a cold that day, or I yeah. just had a fight, or I got hit by a cab on the way in, or something." Can you separate recording the music to just enjoying the music? Not always, but I think I think on this record it's maybe the first time we ever have. Um, mm. Where and I think part of that was the time limitation to it. It was like, look, we're going to make this record in three weeks, or it's not going to get made, <laughs> you know. Um, and so when we left there, what that left in was a bunch of sweet accidents or things that we yeah. thought we loved in the moment. And you listen to it a month later, like, oh, I really do love that. There's something mm -hmm. really, um, you know, vulnerable and, and fresh about it. Yeah. So it, will it sound different? This record? Yeah, to what other people are used to. From yeah, for read. sure. For sure. We, I mean, the thing we kept talking about when we were at this house was it should sound like the house. So there was no producer there. Oh, and, cool. Yeah. And so we just would kind of like this song arrangement, we'd kind of sit in that parlor and go like, well, it probably should be a little bit more like this, homey, cozy. Um, we had strings players come in, just two of them. Mm -hmm. We told them, we're like, we're not stacking anything. It's just you two. 
you know, and they're like, wait, wow. what? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it literally feels like, like in rocking chairs and yeah, you're totally. the whole experience. Um, yeah. So that, that obviously to me is a charm about the record and makes it one of those, like, it's kind of a headphones record for sure. You know, like cool. it's a little sit down and listen and take Love in the it. experience. Hey, look, if Twin Fiddles work for Bob Wills, it'll work for you guys. That's right. Hey, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. But the uh, we wanted to do something fun. Uh, we're going to run this on Monday. And uh, Chelsea actually came up with the idea that you guys have to share with us three things about Need to Breathe that only you guys would know. <laughs> and then one of them has to be just a bold face lie. Basically, oh, two truths and a lie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. <clears throat> So if you need to like get together as a team, yeah, and I'm trying to think there will be editing. Be. Okay. So. All right. Um, think it through. Oh, they're thinking hard. There's a lot of got a couple of things. I mean, you, you want to go first? You know anything? Uh, no. It's yeah, like, I could go first. Okay. Uh, need to breathe drummer. Randall Harris was never in a band before he joined need to breathe. Okay. Truth or false. That's, That's right. one. Are we supposed to be guessing this two things? Josh's hair routine takes at least 45 minutes repeat that for me josh's hair routine takes at least 45 minutes okay best right. hair in rock and roll it is nice <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. our band started 20 years ago because we shopped at the same store <laughs> are you kidding me launch. all right now you have to share the stories <laughs> well that was the false one. <gasps> oh, that's the <laughs> fake one <laughs> Okay, perfect, perfect. But it was believable enough. Hey, it was really <laughs> was good. good. You had me going. Yeah. I was thinking like chess king. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Josh only takes five minutes. I have five or ten. But sometimes 45, though. I mean, He's I just blessed with that naturally. It's yeah. so nice. Do you get comments on it all the time? I do, yeah. And do they ask you, is it a perm? No, I mean, they ask me, like, they literally say, like, what, yeah, how, how do you get it to stand up in the front? And I used to say, like, just stand in front of a fan for 30 minutes and yeah. then walk out the door. Yeah, it, just, it, has its, it has its own mind. It really does and whatever it, it does. its own area. Code. I love it. That's yeah. it. That's all it does. Yep. That's yep. fantastic. Thank you. I, uh, I, I, I am just such a fan. I just love the sound. I love the, the grit and the earthiness. And sometimes I think we're, as just music in general is just way too polished. And that's the greatest compliment I can give you, in my opinion. And that's what I just love about it. When I hear it, I know I was at my chiropractor and I am sitting there waiting to, to go in and who am I starts playing. And then I'm thinking like, this is really cool. I'm really enjoying this, that that's, this music is playing my chiropractor's office. And then I heard his staff singing it. Hmm. And I yeah. thought like, man, that is, that was a joyous moment for me, man, because it's just getting to places that I'm just not accustomed to our music getting to. Yeah. So well done. Thank you oh, so thanks, much. Ma'am. You you share it through your music all the time, but I would love for you to talk to that person that is maybe questioning their faith or considering um, saying yes to Jesus. What kind of message or what kind of encouragement would you offer to them, the hope? And I think it's, it's I mean, I'm going through the same thing in my life all the time, but I, I think um, it's okay to um, be trying to figure it out. It's all, it's okay to be broken. Yeah. I think, I think, um, you know, something I went through the last few years ago, I mean, probably four or five years ago, just the word surrender just really like made sense to me all of a sudden. I kind of like went to everybody. I was like, surrender, that's the key. That's the ticket. And they're like, what are you talking about? But I, I do feel like we're in a lot of ways closest to God when we've given up on our own, you know, yes. uh, our own efforts. Um, and so I think that feels like we were raised in a way it's like, some sort of we're getting closer to God by just like long time in religion. Like the more righteous you get, the closer to the center of the circle you are. Um, and for me, it's been the opposite. It's been where I've been the lowest or the worst or all those things. That's where God's really um, shown himself to me. Um, so that'd be the encouragement. I think for people, it's like, you're not as far away as you think you are. You know, you're right there. Um, it's not about some sort of stepped, Yes. Pyramid scheme, you know, to get to <laughs> exactly. no. and you're yeah. not alone. That's the other one too, yeah. man. You are. That's a big old boat. We're all in it together. Yeah, and there's a, the actually the first song on the record says, um, you know, you know that we're human, and that's why we're that's what we're here for. Yes. That's what God made us. We're <laughs> we're just here, you know. And and I think for me, like personally, like to be able to walk through life knowing, you know, as, as I'm older now, just to like see my kids and and just be like. Just kind of just grow, just do what you do. You just grow, and and mm. you know things things happen, and and you know, I feel like God finds us in in those moments where we're just growing and and learning, and 
uh, and we don't have to know all the answers. And that's that's a, there is a lot of freedom in that. I you know? I feel like I have discovered your secret sauce, like <laughs> how honest and open you guys are, and like how how free freeing that feels as a believer for years and years. And maybe you did grow up in very legalistic type background, or you had you have to do A, B, and C, or else you know God will never love you. But just to know. Every single one of us feels it, whether or not we talk about it or not is the difference. Mm -hmm. And by you talking about it, I think that you're allowing so much freedom for so many other people that for years and years just thought it was religion rather than relationship. For sure. Certainly. I mean, that's yeah. a great way to say it. We should bring you on the tour with us. <laughs> hey, I, can, I can play the trumpet. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Come on. Yeah, but not, yeah. Hey, Skip. You may want to listen to it. <laughs> well, well, try, well, I'll try out. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. What I do is Make I just sure. bring Amy and go like, Amy, why don't you pray for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Then I'm out. All right. Have a good night. I, I appreciate the time you, for you to, to do this. I know this week has been absolutely yeah. crazy for you guys. Last night, all the way through the weekend. And to come in here and do this, we really, really yeah. appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Of course, man. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you all so much.